Morning folks, now if you follow this channel you'll know that we at Freebirds consider ourselves experts in fitted Alco furniture and if you follow you'll see a very familiar style because we've standardised what we do. It wasn't always that way, we used to do things in a whole range of ways, experimenting, refining and this, this job was fitted three, four years back, I'm not quite sure. Customers had me back to fit a third shelf and I thought there were a few interesting things to pick up on here. So for example, I used to always match up the setting um, on this job, as I remember it, the customer specifically requested it, but from around about this time, I, I generally steered customers towards not doing this because you lose storage space and the doors can end up too squat looking. This one also had a face frame, a beaded face frame, which we very rarely do because we just offer a standard that frankly is a bit easier for us and all really works really well. So for the sake of comparison, this one was made from pine, redwood, I guess, which I think I bought as PSC 18 mil or thereabouts. And it looks like I've done a, uh, a tenon and a through groove, match the thickness of the panel, which is MDF because it paints better. I'd figured out that that much, at least for the panel at that stage. Might have molding applied very similar to how we do it. Um, but I was still using butt hinges and I was making the frame and then trimming the door to fit within the frame. In terms of closing, I remember being quite proud of spending ages figuring out this method with, with um, neodymium magnets. They, they were glued in there with epoxy, glued in here and then over -filled. At this stage, we weren't always painting. So this one I fitted unpainted and the customer painted just the fronts. And I suppose I'm still working on the theory that solid wood is good, MDF is bad. You know. Solid wood is better, it's proper joinery. However, look at this. I did not fit this with a gap this big. That's opened up because that's what happens with solid wood. Uh, in the house, it really dries out a little bit more, shrinks a bit, and you get a gap opening up. That doesn't happen with MDF, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the gaps all round, generally I'd say the gaps that we're getting now are more consistent all the way around because we use concealed hinges that have adjustment built in. So we pretty much just say no to requests to do butt hinge jobs because we get plenty of jobs with our standard style. I mean, I don't remember the last time a customer batted an eyelid at a picture of our standard style, which is MDF, concealed hinges, no real face frame. Obviously there's customers out there that would want it, but we're happy doing what we do on the whole. Now I'll probably get some comments saying you can and you should be able to do high quality joinery with a great fit and finish with solid wood. Yes, of course you can. It's very labor intensive. You probably want to be using hard maple or tulip wood. It's okay, but that actually, I'm told, also uh, can shrink and move quite a lot. And in fact, tulip wood is softer than the Fincer MDF that we use. So over the years, we came to the conclusion we were going to give the customer a better fit and finish and actually a harder material by using the modern moisture resistant MDF, also a better finish, pre-sprayed. And the method of not making a face frame and trimming the doors to fit within it, opened up the ability to pre-spray the doors because we make them perfectly square and we kind of fit the face frame in our current style to the doors. It's more of just uh, loose strips either side. Now, if I'm talking a bit fast, it's because I really need to get this job done. This is probably the most unprofitable job ever because I made the mistake of assuming when the customer rang up, I assumed that we'd already standardized our method, which would have been 54 millimeter thick shelves. He just sent me the photo and thought, oh yeah, I remember. Sent me the alcove width. I said, right, we'll knock up our standard shelves. Turns out when I made these, I hadn't yet standardized on the sort of three times 18 millimeter thickness we do now. I've got a lip applied to an 18 millimeter board and then a six mil board on top. So it's 50, sorry, 44, is that right? Uh, 44, 42 mil thick shell. So we've prepared all the parts as we normally do, brought them over before Christmas and then thought, no, it's all wrong, the lip's wrong. 
and they had to be primed. They'd asked them primed, so I had to take them back, trim the lip down. And also the depth was a little bit wrong because we hadn't standardised the depth. So a little bit of a lesson there to not assume. Quick run through on the methods for these. So we've got these two pre-made parts. The thin one's going to go on the top, which suits the method better because I want the 18 millimetres to be at the bottom so I can use those modesty blocks with 25 mil screws to screw down into that part, which will have the lip then sticking up at the front. Um, so then I don't have to pin and fill. And then I'll just stick the six mil top on top and there'll be a seam where they meet behind the lip, but that's, that's fine out of sight. So I've scribed the six millimeter part in already on top. So that's, that's sort of dropped in on top. And then I'm templating off that, bearing in mind that everything's effectively upside down now. It's easy to get confused because that is actually going to end up there in that orientation. But I want to scribe onto the finished face of the other part. So I've just laid it on, flush to the back and then drawn around it both ends. And as I shared in another story not long ago, I've gone back to just using a handsaw for cutting most of these, and I use it also as the square to mark off. I'll mark that off square down the front, and then just cut down. I can curve it a bit as a cut, and then I'll trim back off with Festool EHL85. EHL not EHL well, that it matters much, EHL65 planer, which means that I'm keeping that plugged in to the extraction rather than swapping back and forth the extraction. And I'll just, I'll just saw into a bucket that's my dust control and this is pretty efficient i've tried loads of methods jigsaw rail saw sometimes hand saw is just the best thing